Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture on dynamics of machinery. In this video, we will be discussing about the dynamic force analysis of slider crank mechanism. So we are knowing that in static force analysis, we are not considering the effect of the accelerating masses or we are not taking the inertia effects. So if uh, the components of machines are accelerating, then it will be associated with inertia forces as well as inertia coupled. So inertia force magnitude you are knowing it is mass into acceleration and it is acting in the opposite direction to that of acceleration. So you can represent it as Fi equal to minus Ma. In a similar way for accelerating or the rotating components inertia coupled will be generated and that value is I alpha which is in the opposite direction to that of angular acceleration. So if you are uh, considering the equilibrium conditions of this mechanisms including this inertia effects then we can, can use the D. Lambert's principle for the analysis then the equilibrium equations will be coming like this where the system will be in equilibrium along with the inertia force also. So sigma f plus fi equal to 0 and the netted couple of sigma torque plus ci will be equal to 0. Using this equilibrium conditions you can analyze the slider crank or four bar mechanism in either way using graphical or analytical method. So here we will be discussing the analysis of slider crank mechanism and using the analytical method. So for using the analytical method, we require the value of this inertia force means we require the value of this acceleration. So acceleration means this acceleration of the piston which is reciprocating. And also for getting the value of this inertia couple, we require the value of this alpha that means the angular acceleration of the uh, connecting rod. So uh, in an analytical method, we will be evaluating the acceleration, we will be evaluating the angular acceleration of the connecting rod, etc. So now let's start with the piston. That means we have to find the acceleration of piston. So acceleration you can obtain from velocity and velocity you can obtain from displacement. So here uh, you are seeing a slider crank mechanism where P dash is the position of the piston corresponding to the inner dead center that means if this crank is at this position c is at c dash then the connecting rod will be coming like this and the piston will be at this position so whenever the crank is rotating by an angle theta with respect to this horizontal line then this piston will be sliding to position p so that the connecting rod will be coming at this position so we are analyzing this mechanism for this instantaneous position where crank is making an angle theta crangling this r the connecting rod length is L and this angle is phi. So this angle is also important. So if you are observing, the displacement occurred for the piston during this motion is from P dash to P. That is this displacement X. So if you are calculating X and representing in terms of these other dimensional parameters, then you can obtain the velocity and from that you can obtain the acceleration. So here first we will be evaluating the displacement of the piston which is equal to the distance from P dash to P. This P dash to P can be obtained by the distance P dash to point O that is center of crank minus the distance P to O. So what is P dash O? So P dash O means the distance from this P dash to O. So if you are observing this is the length of the connecting rod L and that plus this distance that is the radius will be giving you this p dash o and p o means the distance from this point to this one and it is equal to the distance from p to q q is actually the projected point from c to the horizontal line so this p o can be written as p q plus q o so this one will be becoming p dash o is already i mentioned this is l plus r length of the connecting rod plus the length of the crank minus of pq so here from the diagram this distance is l and this is a right angle triangle so pq is the base where this angle is phi so this distance pq will be becoming l cos phi in a similar way, this distance QO will be becoming R cos theta. So I can write expressions. This is L cos phi and this QO is R cos theta. So this will be becoming L cos phi plus R cos theta. So here another substitution I will be making with respect to the dimension of uh, connecting rod and crank. So the ratio of length of connecting rod to crank L by R, I will be calling it as N. So N is a parameter 
which is connecting the uh, ratio of length of connecting rod and crank usually this n is in the range of four five or six something like that so here i can make the substitution for this uh, l so here l will be becoming n times r so this is nr plus r minus of nr cos phi plus r cos theta so in all terms r is a common term so i can take this r outside then this will be becoming r into n plus 1 minus of n cos phi plus cos theta so here i will be maintaining only one variable within the expression for this displacement that means in terms of theta so here two angles are there cos phi or phi and theta so i'll be making substitution for phi in terms of theta also so if you are looking here this cos phi can be written as cos phi is equal to square root of 1 minus sine square phi and here from this triangle so this side is actually common for this right angle triangle and also for this right angle triangles so you can relate the phi and theta from this one so i will be writing this expression for oq so the distance oq is equal to l sine phi and it is same as r sin theta so you can write expression for sin phi as sin theta divided by l by r that means this is equal to sin theta divided by n so you can make this substitution here then finally our displacement x will be becoming so i'll be writing the final expression then x will be equal to r which is coming outside into 1 minus cos theta after, after simplification you will be getting this one 1 minus cos theta plus the second term is n minus square root of n square minus sin square theta so n square minus sin square theta is coming within the square root this, this is the second term and this is the whole expression for the displacement of the piston so displacement of the piston x equal to r into 1 minus cos theta plus n minus square root of n square minus sin square theta so if you are having the displacement next we will be evaluating the velocity of the piston so velocity of the piston is actually the derivative of displacement that is dx divided by dt we have to evaluate dx by dt then x should be a function of time but here x is actually a function of theta so r is a constant this n is a constant then only variable is theta so here you have to use chain differentiation then this dx by dt can be written in terms of dx by d theta into d theta by dt here you can find this dx by d theta easily from this expression because x is represented completely in terms of theta and if you are observing d theta by dt means the rate of change of angular displacement theta theta is actually the angular displacement of the crank so this is the theta variable so d theta by dt means the angular rate of angular displacement of this crank or the angular velocity so you can write this d theta by dt as omega which is actually the angular velocity of the crank and dx by d theta you can evaluate from this expression then after simplification you will be getting the expression for the velocity of piston which is equal to r omega into sin theta plus sin 2 theta divided by 2 into square root of n square minus sin square theta so this is the final expression for the velocity of the piston so this expression we will be using for evaluating the final acceleration of the piston which is required for evaluating the inertia force so for finding the acceleration of the piston you can differentiate velocity with respect to time and before that we will be making a small assumption or simplification so here we are having a square root of n square minus n square theta the sin theta value will always lies within one so sin square theta maximum value is also one so if our n value that is the ratio of l by r is too large then square root of n square minus n square theta or square root of n square minus one is square root of n square itself then you can simplify this expression the denominator is sine 2 theta divided by 2n if n is too large it will be coming like this and we will be making that expression for the differentiation or finding the acceleration so you can use the expression for velocity as r omega into sin theta plus sin 
2 theta divided by 2n and this expression we will be evaluating for the acceleration so acceleration now you can write it as dv by dt and we will be using chain differentiation this is dv by d theta into d theta by dt again one d theta by dt is coming so this one you can take it as omega and this dv by d theta you can evaluate from this expression so after proper differentiation and substituting all terms correctly then you will be getting the final expression for the acceleration of the piston so r omega square into cos theta plus cos 2 theta divided by n so this is the final expression this acceleration is not uh, exact or accurate because we have made some assumption for the velocity so the velocity is r omega into sin theta plus sin 2 theta by 2n and the acceleration is r omega square into cos theta plus cos 2 theta divided by n only there is no 2n so using this acceleration you can find the inertia force of the piston because for piston inertia force is mass into acceleration and it is in the opposite direction that of acceleration so for that we, we have evaluated this acceleration and for evaluating the inertia couple next we have to calculate the angular acceleration of the connecting group. so for evaluating the angular acceleration first we'll be evaluating the angular velocity of the connecting rod so let's get into that so we know the angular velocity of this crank omega can be represented as d theta by dt which is the angular displacement of this theta variable associated with the motion of crank in a similar way we can evaluate the angular velocity of connecting rod also so i'll be denoting it by omega suffix c the angular displacement or the angle associated with the connecting rod is actually phi so if you are able to evaluate this d phi by dt then that will be giving you the angular velocity of the connecting rod so for that we will be uh, taking the relation between phi and theta for that i can write the expression for cq which is the common vertical for the two right angle triangles which i have shown earlier this is equal to l sin phi which is equal to r sin theta so from this expression you are already knowing sin phi equal to sin theta divided by n where n is the ratio of l by r so if i am differentiating on both sides then left side will be becoming sin phi derivative cos phi into d phi by dt which is equal to cos theta into d theta by dt which is omega divided by n so this d phi by dt will be coming from this expression cos theta into omega divided by n into cos phi will be coming so this cos phi can be expressed in terms of square root of 1 minus sin square phi and this for sin square phi you can use this relation and after substitution finally you will be getting the angular velocity of connecting rod that is omega c after simplification you will be getting it as omega into cos theta divided by square root of n square minus sin square theta so this is the final expression for the angular velocity of the connecting rod and from this expression we will be evaluating the angular acceleration of the connecting rod which is required for evaluating the inertia couple so the angular acceleration of the connecting rod i will be calling it as alpha c so which can be evaluated by differentiating the angular velocity and here i'll be using the chain differentiation so d omega c by d theta into d theta by dt this d theta by dt will be getting again omega so after finding this derivative from this expression the final expression for angular acceleration will be getting as like this so it is minus omega square sin. so sorry there is no sin square theta it is sin theta only so it is minus omega square sin theta into n square minus 1 divided by n square n square minus sin square theta the whole raised to 3 by 2 this is the expression for the angular acceleration so in this one we have derived the expression for acceleration of the piston which is one final expression we require and also the angular acceleration that means this one Here, so using this one we can conduct the dynamic force analysis of mechanisms and that we'll be seeing in the next video